Hi, everybody. It is November 22nd. This is another edition of the fabulous and hilarious Flute Loop. Flute Loop. Hoot Loop. <laughs> Fruit Loops is what I had for breakfast. But um, Hoot Loop is the name of the show. And this is a place where you get a little bit of giggle and a lot of information about money. This is for education, information, no fabrication, no BS from the financial media, no telling you to buy all day long, 24 hours a day. Sometimes things aren't worth buying. But today we are going to have a show called a seismic shift because that's what's going on in the world and we're going to keep emphasizing this as you watch it slowly turn even though we're talking about it like it's happening instantaneously seismic shift is like the turning of the titanic i mean it takes like six years for that thing to turn around so you know seismic shift yeah, i'm exaggerating a little bit but seismic shift is something that doesn't exactly happen like that it's not an instantaneous reversal but you see the beginning signs of it and sometimes there is a surge like a big old earthquake like uh, you see around me here I mean I hate earthquakes I live uh, you know in a earthquake territory parts unknown we'll never disclose where we come from because um, right here this information is so damn valuable you have no idea what people to do people would do to get it um, I can tell you this that if I were a woman, I'd be all over me. And if I had that kind of information, whoo, I don't know how I'd get away from them. But here we go to the charts, and we have got an amazing program today. First of all, we're going to start with the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is where we normally start, because it is sort of the signature uh, index of all of them. Here's the seismic surge in that green circle that you see, and it broke out above, you know, a little um, consolidation pattern. We said a few weeks ago that uh, we thought this thing might, would not make a new high. We we didn't think so. We had made three um, consecutive highs below highs. Well, that was wrong. All of a sudden, just out of nowhere, after the election, it surged. I, I, it's still a hard one to explain because, you know, what people thought was going to happen, what people actually happened, how the market reacted to everything that happened, none of those were consistent. And they still, to me, aren't. But it doesn't matter. All that matters is how the market reacted. It doesn't matter to what, to why, to where. So um, with that, we're going to go on to the next one. Now, I normally never do this one. It's called the mid-cap index, Standard & Poor's. It's the um, 400 mid-cap. Th these are basically, you know, companies that are pretty much down on their luck. They're only worth about, you know, five, ten, twenty billion dollars. So, you know, they're basically, you know, clipping coupons and, uh, you know, paying their employees less than minimum wage if they can get away with it. Uh, you know, that, that opposed to being, say, a small cap where, you know, you're worth about $250 million and you really can't even afford to feed your dog because your company is so small. A uh, large cap company, on the other hand, we're talking about trillions and um, I don't know. I don't know. That sounds large to me. It's no longer large because, you know, we're talking about $27 trillion national debt. So what's another trillion among friends, huh? So anyway, that's the mid cap index. It's looking really good here. That's why I've got green all over the place today. Uh, this is the NDX, the NASDAQ 100. Uh, you know, I've kind of gone back and forth on this, and I'm going to do that one more time. If you don't mind, it is a analyst prerogative, especially an economist prerogative, a Markonomics 101 economist prerogative to change his mind or her mind or Ace's mind. Um, but that's kind of what we're doing here. And I want to show you why. This is in a relatively bullish pattern. It's in a, it's in a nice little wedge pennant consolidation. The problem is that, you know, um, once we gapped up last week before the election and it went all the way almost up to the green high, um, it suddenly has lost its verve. And that's not normal. I mean, normally when something does have a seismic shift, it's accompanied by volume. It's accompanied by tons and tons and tons of people all doing the same thing at one time. And that's what makes it a seismic surge. It is basically a bunch of lemmings getting together or a flock of seagulls, whatever. Uh, lemmings not meaning in a pejorative sense, but people have the idea at the same time. And or one other thing is going on. When you see a move this big, 
it means somebody was caught the wrong way, probably short. Uh, short selling is a way of making money from the market on the way on the way down. You always buy buy low. You always sell high. So short selling is just the opposite in um, you know in in pattern. You sell high first, buy low second. So that would be what a short sale would be here. And I'm not sure that uh, NDQ is going to make new highs here. I know I said it was going to last week. I know it said it wasn't going to before. So um, I got to be right at least one of those two, right? So, um, but I'm going to actually make the argument today, this thing is going to have a really tough time breaking out. So, um, uh, the uh, New York Stock Exchange, uh, the NYA, I don't put this up very much, but this is the basic sort of like stodgy blue chip, smaller than the Dow type of banks and industrial companies that, that just make up uh, the New York Stock Exchange. And these things surged again to a new, almost a new high. And it looks to me like it will, but it's right up at its new highs. And it is, it indexes like this make new highs. Uh, you know, the odds that the market's going to keep going for a while continue. So, you know, this is another positive sign for the market. And, um, you know, uh, I'm going to... I'm going to show you some more here as we go on. This is a the uh, Standard & Poor's small cap index, the the small cap 600. Uh, this thing was lagging the market badly. The big indexes. Look at this thing; it just surged. It's about to make new highs. It's now the strongest, you know, sort of sub market there is out there. Uh, I'm 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 absolutely you know astonished that this thing you know that the small caps would would come on at the end. They normally lead. They normally do not catch up. They lead. So when they were acting badly, that was another reason to think they were leading the market on what was to come a bear market. The bear market is still to come. Believe me, it has just been delayed slightly. You know, kind of like our airlines, and um, kind of like getting a budget deficit too. Just delayed by about 50 years um, okay so here's the standard and poor's large cap index same kind of thing bullish pattern uh, breakout the circle but not really a breakout with 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 fever I mean you'd want to see this thing go up two three days in a row and probably gap one of those days and instead it's kind of just milled around this could easily reverse you know I'd not be a buyer here I, I know I said last time you know maybe you could take take one of these for a trade I would I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. I'd be raising cash. I'd be thanking my lucky stars that that this even this move uh, existed and just wait for the right opportunity to come. There are things that are setting up very nicely. We're going to talk about over the coming program and programs. There's more than one group that's looking really good now. So uh, we're going to go on to the transportations um, or I'm sorry, I always forget to do this. And, you know, we always have to have our HR department remind me in a very nasty way that these are transgender Americans. These are not to be called trannies anymore. Uh, they are, you know, they, they get their own bathroom and that's all there is to it. I don't care that there's only like 20,000 of them in the United States. They're still transgender Americans and deserve every bit of right we do. Um, and now what's interesting about this particular sector is that it is it is planes and rails and and stuff like that now airplanes make a big chunk of this and they are operating at 50 percent capacity i read that today warren buffett's buying them i have no idea why because even at 50 percent capacity it's going to take several years for them to be able to break to, to break even airlines operate at high fixed costs they have um hubs you can't just break a hub down and say, okay, we closed our hub because you got planes flying in and out and you have, you have, um, you have a whole schedule. So all of that is really hard to, to scale down to where if your revenues are, have dropped in half to scale down your expenses in half, that's almost impossible. You've got to give up routes. You, you've got to get all you got to get concessions from your unions. That's always a problem. So in any event, um, this one making new highs, uh, it still confirms that we are in a bull market as much as my world view is, is just <clears throat> by the whole thought of it. That's why it's so important not to you know maintain your world view. If I maintain my world view here, I'd be telling you, yeah, yeah, they went up to a new high, but blah, 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 I'd still short them. Uh, maybe that is my world view, but no, I wouldn't still short them. Um, now, I'm going to go into sort of the NASDAQ Big Five again because they're saying something much different than a couple days ago. I mean, um, 
you know, they do know more than a couple words, and I guess, you know, they get a little more fluent over time. But, you know, out of the five or six largest companies on the NASDAQ, you know, probably uh, 25% of the market cap of the world, okay, we've got Apple, which has got probably almost 25% of the world. But um, Apple did not break out. It was in a really pretty neutral triangle, and it's up against the upper bounce, but I, I think it would have broken out if it was going to go. I think this thing has just lost oomph. So right now, I'm giving this a minus. You know, uh, this thing's bearish. I wouldn't, I still wouldn't short it. I wouldn't short it until it crossed the, the line on the downside. But nonetheless, here's Amazon. We've talked about this one, head and shoulders pattern and a rounded top still in that pattern. I know it's not drawn precisely because, you know, of the, uh, you know, <laughs> the program we're using here. But this thing, I'll tell you, um, this is 0 for 2 now. So you've got two big NASDAQ companies not really pulling, you know, pulling the sled. Here's another one, Facebook. Um, I love to, I love to give Facebook crap. Um, I'm not, I'm going to let him go today and come up with a real good one tomorrow, I think, or not, or the next day. But, um, I'll tell you this, my fax still doesn't work. Their checkers suck. You know, they ought to replace them with some consumer, you know, some people that could answer a question like, uh, you know, uh, I can't recapture my password. How do I do it? Uh, how do I place an ad? You know, those kind of things that most people want to know. Uh, seems to me Facebook could probably hire a few of those people. They just got rid of the fact checkers. In any event, uh, this thing is curling over. I'd give it a neutral right now. So one more day down, two more days down. We could have three out of the six in bad patterns. And that's not good. All right. This one's Google in a good pattern. I don't know why, really, to tell you the truth, other than the fact that, uh, you know, they own, um, you know, they, they own um, uh, YouTube and Markonomics 101, Hoot Loot, has just debuted on YouTube at number one. Okay, not number one, number two. Well, maybe number three. Okay, so it's a little down there, but it's in the top thousand. Maybe a top million? All right, n never mind. We'll, we'll, we'll keep you going. Okay, so um, Microsoft also, another bad pattern. And I've been saying, I was saying head and shoulders, rounded tops. They kind of looked like last week they may finally have gotten enough energy to break out. They didn't. Okay, this, this thing should have made a new high. It did not. So now four of them look like crap. So I, right now, I'm going to stick my neck out on a limb like this. All right, where it can get chopped off, but I'm going to say this right now: the Nasdaq, at the very best, is going to be an underperformer on the way up. At the very best, at the very least, it's going to catch people by surprise. It's, it's going to have already made it stop. It may not go crashing down, but it's just going to be weak because right now the action is in other sectors. All right, copper. Here's the place action is right here. I mean, why is copper going up? Because home housing starts are going up. Why are housing starts going up? Because people are filthy rich. I mean, isn't it obvious? All of their businesses, they could close their businesses down because they're rich. They could retire. You know, who needs to have a small family business when you don't have to? And you can, you know, live off of uh, unemployment or, you know, you can have your store rioted or looted. I mean, that's much more fun stuff. But, um, you know, copper is the leading material in home starts. And home starts is another thing I don't understand. I've shown that on prior episodes, why home starts uh, and home builders are at a new high. I mean, literally for that to happen, you have to have household formation. Household formation means people getting married, buying refrigerators, having kids, buying cars, living in the suburbs, driving a station wagon, soccer practice, uh, didn't make part, husband didn't make partner at the law firm because he had an affair with the secretary, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Next door neighbors, you know, they're, uh, you know, they're satanic worshipers. That's the kind of thing we're talking about here. Housing starts and new houses, where are all these people going to go? And nobody needs them anyway. All right. I, I do all that stuff at home. Look, I don't live in a big place here, a location unknown, but all that stuff gets done pretty easily. This one is a U.S. dollar. I have made a point of how important the dollar is. The dollar is barely above a multi-year low. If the dollar cannot hold the 92 level, okay, if it cannot hold the 92 level by a significant amount, you know, not 91.999999. That's what Josh would say. Josh, my cameraman, who I love to death. But boy, you know, it's a hot day outside, isn't it, Josh? No, it's not. It's 89.9 .9 degrees. Okay, Josh, thank you very much. 
Thank God he's a good-looking guy, because otherwise, with that personality, I just don't know. All right, so here we go. He, he laughs at my jokes, so, you know, I got to I gotta give him a hard time. Okay, this is the five-year yields on the treasuries. Now, you notice, again, we've talked about a, a, a bottoming formation. Well, first of all, the reason I feel pretty confident it's a bottoming formation is where the hell are they going to go lower? They traded at 35 basis points. That's 0.35%. All right. That's how low they got. So, you know, they're not really yielding anything. Um, same here with the with the 10 year. The 10 year is about to break out when it breaks out above uh, uh, about a percent. Doesn't sound like much to me or you, but that is going to be significant because, you know, think about, for example, uh, the U.S. budget deficit right now. Uh, military spending is number four. It's at about uh, 300 plus uh, billion dollars a year. Okay, well, what if you have to start uh, your budget deficit and military spending and all that stuff has to be financed with 3% debt instead of 2% debt instead of 1% debt? Now you have a huge, now you have a $10 trillion deficit. Now you have numbers so big that, that, they, that they boggle the eye. Only I have that much money. And, you know, that was before last week's bad trade and, and, and Ace basically went and raided my bank account. So... We're um we're going on here to the 30 year again same kind of thing this thing's going up and again think about financing costs of the U.S. budget deficit and how much that's going to be and how expensive retiring debt's going to be at higher rates it's just going to it's going to be a you know basically one of those uh, ongoing reinforcing negative cycles it is something I do not want to live through but I will and we're going to tell you all about it and how to avoid the bad stuff that happens. That's what we're here for, to keep you from getting into trouble because I have 40 years worth of getting into trouble to tell you how not to do, okay? So um, we're gonna go next to junk bonds. Now, why did I put junk bonds in here? Because junk bonds are both an equity and they have a debt component. They are higher risk than, than regular corporate investment grade bonds, which means triple a double a uh single a junk bonds are not junk they yield more because they risk more that's it there's nothing junky about them it's a term a, a pejorative term uh but um as you can see these th do these things look like the economy's crashing these things ought to be getting killed junk bonds ought to be getting killed they ought to be the ones that are going oh my god default risk default risk not happening here apparently because they're at new highs New highs. Whew. Okay, um, now we're going to go on to uh, where we think really some of the action is going to be, and this is gold. Gold is really close to breaking out of a um, of a you know multi month triangle, and the thing I like about it is that the longer this triangle is the bigger the move out of it. So while we've kind of suffered while sitting in here and getting in a little early, um, I'm not too worried about it because it has somewhat held its its place and it's going to explode out of here. There's no doubt in my mind it is going to explode out of here. How do, you, how do I know this? How am I so certain? The reason I'm so certain is this. Our GDP is going down, okay? And prices are a function of how much money, how much currency is chasing how many goods? If goods are going down, people are paying, being paid not to work, and they're simultaneously being paid all kinds of stimulus programs not to work, okay? So now you have a bunch of product not being made by a bunch of people carrying around a bunch of paper, and since when has producing paper ever led to prosperity? If someone has an answer to that question, please fill me in. Uh, and if you have any questions, anything else, please, uh, Feel free to give us, uh, you know, give us a call or write anything. We'd love to, you know, to, uh, you know, to answer all those. But gold still looks good. Silver too. I've been kind of up and down about this thing. Silver looks like it's in a long, 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 uh, great pattern here. I think silver could be just about ready to go. So I'm getting pretty excited about this one. Um, these are the miners, the gold and silver miners, the smaller companies. These are the ones most likely to be taken over for their reserves and um, 
these are these are companies I really like to watch because a lot of them have great reserves. They're not big. They're easy to be bought. Newmont has already bought a company. Bear uh, Bear Gold bought a company. There's a lot of acquisitions. There's going to be a lot of acquisitions of juniors. Absolutely, 100%. At, in, a, in a positive cycle, positive commodity cycle, it's just going to happen. So um, this is one of my favorites called Coeur d'Alene. And um, this is a silver company that uh, I like personally. It's in a it's in a good pattern, but I kind of wrote it two different ways, neither of which bother me, neither of which are, are precisely exact, but both all of which are positive, all of which are saying that this thing has held up really well and it's just ready for the next push up and it will take off like a rocket. Somebody just light that fuse and it's going. And one of the reasons that I say that is this is Coeur d'Alene, same company I just showed you, okay? This is this right here. Look at that, okay? Now watch this. Okay, so this is this little area right here where the arrow is. Okay, look at <laughs> the stock's trading at 750. Not so long ago, traded at 70. Wouldn't you like a part of that move? I sure as hell would. And it's just barely started. It got down to maybe four. I mean, but it, you know, it took a long time to go all the way down. It'll take a long time to go up. This is a good long-term hold. And I would say at a very minimum, it's going to hit the 2025 range in the next one or two years, the very minimum, unless somehow we, you know, manage to get all the paper out of the system, which I don't think is going to happen. Okay. So next one that we, um, we find interesting, and I never thought I would love Bitcoin like I do today. Uh, this is called um, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. It is a very safe way to own Bitcoin uh, through like an ETF like type of security it's not an etf but it's a, it's called a, it's called a trust it's run by the the Winklevi. and uh you know at least one thing it trades at a premium above bitcoin bitcoin's cheaper to buy but your chances of losing bitcoin are 25 percent okay 25 percent they're gone they're in trash cans they're in heaps the fbi has absconded with them you, you, they just don't exist in that size anymore so you know it's it, bitcoin is fabulous for moving wealth it's fabulous for legal transactions don't buy pizza with it all right um and we're gonna have another we're gonna have a whole special show on cryptocurrencies everything you want and need to know is coming up uh because this is a show of information we don't you know we want you to be informed not misled that's all there is to it uh again um el dorado gold i um i wanted to show you this it's been an uptrend this is the daily now, what happens if I compare to the monthly? Look at that. See, I mean, all those little ups and downs are, are like nothing. This thing can go up 20 times. Uh, so don't let yourself get too shaken up by, you know, point moves here and there. It's just part of the volatility. So, um, you know, that's El Dorado. Love this one, Hecla Mining. Same thing as Coeur d'Alene. It's held up there really well. Great pattern and a breakout. And silver is probably... Uh, the better of the two metals, it is in free fall of production. Any company like Hecla that's got any production left of it, that's worth a lot of money. Silver is not a primary metal. It is it is mostly mined as a, uh, a secondary metal. In other words, your, your copper or gold miner, silver just happens to be there. But you, you don't find a pure silver mine very often. There aren't many of them, and the production is going down so, so fast. It's not funny. Um, Seabridge Gold, the reason I put this one in there, this is the cheapest way to buy gold I know. This company has more gold per share uh, than I've ever seen. It, it trades at 18 and, and literally the value of its gold, if you could take it out of the uh, ground for nothing, that is, would, would literally, you'd be buying gold at, at 10 or 20 bucks an ounce, okay? Not 2000 you know, it's not going to take 2000 to get it out of the ground. What Seabridge does is it actually doesn't mine gold. It buys reserves and holds them. And this is basically the biggest reserve holder of gold uh, without producing any. And someone's bound to buy this thing because these are not bad deposits. They're fairly huge. Three of like the top five or ten are held by this one company. And so, um, you know, I like it for that reason. Um, and then finally, Silver Court Metals. Uh, this is one that again is trading near its highs. It's it's almost made a new high. It has had good relative strength, and again, these are the ones that you want to look at. 
the strongest. I, I gave you ones that I actually have taken positions on myself. Um, and, you know, I've, I've highlighted, you know, like here, the support green line. That's where I'd get out if I had to. I don't want to. I think this is a good long-term hold. And I think it's all part of that seismic shift that we that we have been seeing and that we are seeing. So we've seen it in the um, we've seen it in the Dow. We've seen it in the financials. I'll talk about that more next time. Interest rates more next time. But things are happening. You need to get yourself ready because when the next seismic shift occurs, if you're not invested before the seismic shift occurs, you are lose. You're going to lose out on it. You're going to get a gap just like that. And it's by the time you can get back in, it's too late because Mr. Market will be dangling that carrot right above you going, come on, come on, come on, come on. And you're going to go, I can't miss out. I can't miss out. I can't miss out. And that's what happens. So anyway, we're going to be back next week, uh, middle of Thanksgiving week. Have a great Thanksgiving week. Good trading. Uh, Marconomics 101, hoot loot, over and out.